what it is about being in a room with Jen Tepper, but it always makes me feel like I didn't waste my life. <laughs> There's something about the love of this film. Time, um, when I was a, a kid, uh, uh, nice Jewish boys got taken to the theater for their birthdays. <laughs> you got to see a matinee of the, the hit musical, or whatever it was. And when I was uh, 11, uh, the ads I liked, the full page ads in the Times, and there was this great ad for applause. And Lauren Bacall, uh, all about evening, was going, I really wanted to see applause. And apparently, uh, the ticket broker that my parents used, uh, they said, oh, they're all sold out, but a new musical just opened that's supposed to be great for kids. So my grandmother took me for my 11th birthday to see Company. <laughs> it was very appropriate. Um, and uh, so watching Pam Myers just a few seconds ago was just ridiculous. Ridiculous. Um, and it changed my life for sure. And then I got to do um, Merrily at the, at the Alvin. Jim Walton always says, for some, you know, it's the Alvin and the Simon, and are they going to name it the Theodore because they're hitting all the chipmunks? <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was here because it's like, uh, so Jim. Uh, the, the, the story um, that, uh, there's so many Marley stories, but also in terms of Martin, this is a, uh, we, uh, for some reason, dispossessed Annie. And then it ran another 48 years, and we ran, of course, 38 minutes. And, uh, but when we got there, Daisy Prince just told me the story in the girls' dressing room, in the lovely, charming little girls' dressing room when we moved in. They went into the bathroom, and on the toilet seat with an arrow paint, uh, pointing towards the toilet was the words, here is where your show is going. <laughs> and if you know that, Martin. Uh, and they were right. I mean, they actually, we lasted uh, 10 seconds. Uh, there's, um, uh, we were postponed for about eight months because uh, Steve had just written Sweeney Todd and he wanted Marilee to sound like a 25-year-old. and So he had to kind of go backwards and not be as sophisticated. And um, so we postponed and we had these parties. And uh, one of the waiting parties, uh, someone said, why don't you ask, you know, how the was out there? Uh, so I called Hal and I said, do you want to go? When? when? I said, Saturday. And he said, we'd love to. And I said, uh, and he said, and we'll bring Steve, too. So I threw my parents out of our apartment. <laughs> and, um, we had this party and the cast was there. And Steve um, uh, said, do you have a piano? And I said, sure. And he went into my room with the piano. And he sat on my, you know, my child piano. And he played the score for Marilee for the first time for the cast. And... Um, Pam, uh, sort of like you, he said, I think you had a birthday a few days ago, Ronnie. I said, yeah. And he said, so this is sort of a birthday present for you, and he played Good Thing Going. So anytime I hear that song, I always think, did he really write that for me? Or is it just coincidence? Uh, at, that, at that party, um, there was a song that I wrote for the cast, and um, I, it hasn't been, I haven't done it in third, look, you've heard Gershwin, and you've heard Charles Strauss. This is the first time this song has been heard in 35 years. Its quality is such that I think every 35 years it should be heard once. <laughs> so the next time I will sing it will be when I'm 92 years old, if I'm alive. Uh, I do this for Jen because um, she loves this show so much. And um, for the cast of that show, she always makes us feel like we were big stars because uh, we were in it. And I know that for all of us, that always uh, makes us feel just swell. So uh, it, I'm in retirement, nothing left. The song is not that great, but it's for Jen. And it was what I wrote for um, this Merrily party. And then Steve played the score, and my song didn't sound so good. But uh, <laughs> since he's not here, I'm just going to do it. It's real quick. The only thing you need to know is that ABC was uh, doing a documentary on the making of Merrily that got aborted. That's in the lyric. Ron Field was our original choreographer, not our final choreographer. And uh, Eugene Lee um, designed the set. And uh, it's real quick, uh, but uh, it's the only time I think I can give this to Jen. So I'm going to do it really quickly. I didn't show up to the sound check, so God knows. <laughs> Okay. Real quick. Okay. All right. This is it. I, I was, uh, there was a song from the Garrett Gaieties. I don't know if that played the album. And it was a minuet, and I was very into it. So 
Um, it's in the key of C because I only play in the key of C. <laughs> I play very well for a 12 year old. I still play very well for a 12 year old. Um, it never got any better. Uh, here it is. This is for Jen. Merrily we roll along by Kaufman and Hart. 1934, a bomb, but more importantly, the start of a musical by Sondheim, Firth, and Prince. Shit. <laughs> Verily, in March, we'll be on Broadway at last. And it's cast with kids, put in your bids, we're aging awful fast for this musical by Sondheim, Prince, and Firth. Since company have these three been writing, give a toast for the musical that's gonna be the most. Firth Prince and Sondheim, Ron Field and I. 